there. Good afternoon, radiographers and radiography students. This is X-Ray Ed coming at you once again with some valuable advice. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today's episode we're going to be doing some skeleton radiography. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, Ed, what the heck? If it's a skeleton, can't we just see if the bones are broken or not? Why, yes, we can. But I'm telling you, this is going to help us out. Today we're going to be talking about um, a little trick called the Y-view shoulder. Now, this is one of those x-rays that people repeat a lot um, because, depending on the patient, it can be pretty hard to uh, position this thing correctly so that you get it on the first try every time. And okay realistically can we get any x-ray perfectly right on the first try every time uh... no probably not you know even though you, you might have shot a thousand chest x-rays and then somebody comes in and you clip off the apices or the angles or you've got them off center to the left too far whatever you know something happens you know does it mean you don't know what you're doing no it's just everybody's different but why view shoulder why view shoulder is one of those x-rays that seems to get repeated a lot more than the average bear. And for those of you that don't know, what a Y-view shoulder is, actually, is a lateral view of the scapula with the humerus interposing. Okay, so what we're going to do here, the reason we do this um, Y-view shoulder x-ray, I, I shouldn't have said Y-view scapula, what I'm talking about is Y-view shoulder. And the reason we do this is to see if the patient's uh, shoulder joint is dislocated one way or another. Now, most of the time, if the joint is dislocated, it's going to be dislocated anteriorly. That's just the way your muscles pull the bone. It's very rare for somebody to have a, a posterior dislocation. That would take a, a very serious impact. Does it happen? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just far more common for the, and for the dislocation to be anterior rather than posterior. So, what let's do. I'm going to bring Boney here over to the board. We're going to set him up for some x-rays and just kind of see how that looks. Okay, so I've got my tube in detent. I've got my image receptor aligned so that the center of my image receptor is approximately the level of the surgical neck of my patient's humerus. I've got my tube lined up with my image receptor and I'm coned down to a 10 by 12 image receptor size. That will do the trick for most people's scapulas. Uh, most of the time the scapula slash shoulder joint isn't all that big. Um, actually, I'm going to go up just a little bit. I think I might have been, been a little bit too low to start with. And as you know, when you're making x-rays, a half an inch sometimes can make the difference between a good x-ray and a repeat. Okay, so we're going to position our patient. What I'm going to do, I'm going to palpate my patient's shoulder, and I'm going to feel for their the inferior, I'm sorry, not the inferior angle, but the medial border of the scapula. I'm going to find that. Now I'm also going to find the acromion. It's right here. Okay, this is this uh, point. It's basically the most lateral part of the scapula, um, and it should be right above the humeral head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate bony so that the medial border and the acromion are perpendicular to the image receptor. And as you can see from the shadow here, See the shadow right there of the, of the scapula? I'm going to rotate my patient. There we go. Nice and perpendicular. You'll notice that when the scapula is perpendicular to the image receptor, there's a little bit of a gap between the rib cage and the scapula. There's some flesh in between there. Okay, now I've got this guy centered up, positioned correctly. Um, now, if your patient has a lot of, uh, as we say, if your patient has much back, like me, I've got a lot of um, adipose tissue on my back, you know, can't be helped, I like to eat. You might have to dig a little bit, that's why I like to use my thumb to try to find this medial border. Dig in there until you can feel it. 
Um, the acromion usually is sticking out. It's at the top of the patient's shoulder. Right here. Right there is my acromion. I can feel it. It's that bony protuberance sticking up there. So if I can find that, and if I can find my medial border, then I can line this dude up straight. Okay, and now I'm at the correct level. I've got my patient positioned. I'm going to ask my patient to suspend respiration while we make this exposure. Should work like a charm. Okay, now there's something I wanted to show you. This is a variation on the same theme. Um, there's another image that a lot of doctors like called the supraspinatus outlet view, the SOV. In the book, they also call it the near method, as opposed to the far method, I guess. Okay, so what we want to do, you see this little groove right here? We want to put our x-ray beam right down through that groove, um, and this will help the doctor determine if there's any impingement or if there's any uh, bony... Um, like osteophytes growing down in there that might be impinging the muscles from moving back and forth in this groove. Uh, there's some nerve bundles in there too. Blood vessels too. There's a lot of stuff in there. And this will help the doctor determine if there's an issue. So once again, we've got our patient positioned so that this medial border and the chromion are perpendicular to the image receptor. Okay, very good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise my tube just a little bit and then I'm going to apply a downward angle of 15 degrees. Now this will vary depending on your doctor. I worked for a physician one time that wanted all of these images done with a 25 degree uh, caudal angle. Um, you know, that's just the way he liked it and so that's what we did. But standard is 15 degrees. Okay, so here we go. Now as you notice, Oh, sorry. I'm still going to be exiting the surgical neck. Right there we go. Going to make sure that my image receptor is centered. It is. Going to put a marker on here. This is the patient's right side. So we'll put a right marker up. I should have done that in the previous image. Apologies. Okay, we're still collimated to a 10 by 12. Now, a bony here is real thin. So I can actually cone down some for this. But, you know, I'd like to keep the whole scapula. You don't necessarily have to have the whole scapula for this because, and as a matter of fact, some doctors like us to use um, a circular cone if you have one, an extension cone. Uh, the main area of interest is the glenohumeral joint, um, you know, and, and the top part of the scapula here. But I like to include the whole scapula if at all possible. Okay, so here we go. Now we're all set. We're perpendicular, got our patient uh, in good position, got our angle on. Okay, so now we're just going to give our breathing instructions. Okay, take in a breath, hold your breath, beep. Okay, you can relax and breathe normally. All right, so that was my quick and dirty tutorial on how to do your Y-view shoulder and get it right just about every time. Um, you can use that same methodology for the Y-view scapula. The difference there will be you'll take, uh, your, take your patient and put their arm up and across their chest, get it away from the body of the scapula. But other than that, the, the patient positioning is going to be the same thing. Um, so anyways, thank you once again for tuning in to X-ray Education. And Boney and I will see you again next time. All right, thanks much and have a great day.